good. We seem to be okay. It's one of the reasons why we're in the position that we're in. And there you go. Macabre view of our buffalo skull. Funnily enough, both Brent and myself have both stopped at this buffalo bull in the last two days to talk about it. It was the one with the blind right eye. Brent stopped it with it yesterday morning, and I stopped with it the day before. The lioness is crunching away, and I really mean it when I say they probably, judging by their empty bellies, they probably never got to have more than a couple of mouthfuls of this buffalo before the males came in last night. Genre and myself actually encountered the males as they were racing in. It was a very interesting experience because we were trying to get out of a very tricky spot. I was concentrating on off-roading. And the next thing, this, the air around us erupted in roars. There was one male lion about a meter away from us on one side and one couple of meters away on the other. And Jandra and I, I was talking about it last night, we both levitated out of our seats because there came as such a surprise. They just sort of snuck in out of the darkness. My, my car lights didn't even pick them up and all of a sudden there were just roars all around us. It was an incredibly intense experience. But they were clearly racing straight towards the distress calls that they heard from the buffalo. Our time at this sighting is unfortunately limited. As you can imagine, there are lots and lots of people that would like to come and see it. And because of the little ones that are present here, and there's actually two sets, as I mentioned earlier, just one that we can't see at the moment, and then our little bundle of delectable monsters over there, because of them, it is only a two-vehicle sighting, so only two vehicles are going to be allowed into this particular spot. So we will enjoy the most time that we can here, and then we will pull out. So bear with me one moment, because I do just need to chat to Abel and find out where he is. Abel, Abel. And then what we will do is come back to this position at the end of the Sunrise Safari. What's your position? Okay, copy. I was just wondering which vehicle. I thought you were on first standby for these in Gala. I know you said you'd make a big loop, but just let me know when you're in the area. Okay, so we've still got more time than I thought, actually. Because the person who is coming in first to see them is still very, very far away. So we can actually enjoy some time with our fierce and Kuhuma hunters. Now, of course, most of you will have noticed by now that there are only four here. And that is because it is the amber-eyed female, the youngest female. And the amber-eyed female is actually very clearly identifiable with that scar. Just realized that that scar is very prominent on her right shoulder. And we will always be able to identify her. There you go. Don't know how that happened. Maybe hunting, maybe mating. Or maybe even trying to feed off a carcass with a male. So they are here, and the mothers of the two oldest set of cubs are here as well. The ones that we've been watching play, and then the set that I can hear squalling up somewhere in the bushes somewhere. The other female has probably gone through to where she's keeping the littlest members of the Yunkahuma pride. There's three tiny, tiny cubs that we've been watching around Buffalzook Dam. She's probably gone to go and feed them. And she will be back a little bit later, perhaps even to bring them to their first ever kill, although they are still very, very tiny. But perhaps, perhaps, today is the day we will get to see those little cubs at their first ever kill. Tucking in, forcing the skin back. It's not an easy job eating a buffalo. It's not quite as difficult as killing a buffalo, but it's not easy. The meat is f incredibly tough. When we watch it, it's not... It, they have to put in a great deal of effort. I love that little cub's head every now and again, by the way. Popping up over the rump there. Oh, just an ear. Just an ear. Tucking in to the scraps. But it is very difficult. The skin is phenomenally tough. It's also very well attached to the muscles by connective tissue. So the, lion, it, the lions feeding off it have to exert a phenomenal amount of effort to pull back the skin and get to the meat underneath.
Uh, last night we watched the Pride take down this buffalo from start to finish. Justin is, you wanted to know about how long it takes a Pride to kill a buffalo. It depends on the Pride. So it depends on the size of the buffalo and it depends on the, the number of lions and it depends on whether or not they've got males with them. Last night there were only five females. The, f the females are weaker than the males. They're not as strong and they're not as good at sort of exerting that strength that the males have in order to bring the buffalo down and suffocate it. Very often male lions will take point on this sort of thing. So the less males there are and the less lions there are altogether will mean the longer the process is for that particular buffalo. Now, last night, how long did it take, Chandra? An hour? I don't know. It all went, it's all such a blur that I'm not 100% sure. No, maybe less. Might have taken them about 40 minutes. <laughs> now, it must have been about 40 minutes that they took to kill the buffalo. And that was a situation where you had five lionesses and no assistance from any of the males. Not that the males didn't get to reap the rewards. And gruesome bloody faces, the females finally reaping the rewards. Liz, when we saw this buffalo, I mentioned that we both commented on him, and Brent and myself both mentioned when we saw him that he was quite an old boy. Oh, hello. Have you emerged? With a full belly. Sorry, we'll get back to the buffalo in a moment. Let's just see what this little cub does. I think it's going to use the rest of the cubs as pillows. Standard lion lack of personal space, just sitting on top of each other. Something that will continue throughout the rest of their lives. Cleaning off the buffalo. Oh. So, so cute. Yep, better start cleaning off the remains of Buffalo, little one. Okay, copy. I will start pulling out in a moment. Sorry, guys, we've got to the end of the time that we can spend with this particular kill. He got there much faster than I expected. In fact, I'm, I'm quite amazed at the speed at which that happened. So just a quick answer to Liz's question about how old this buffalo was, I would guess it around maybe 12, 13 years old. Possibly even older, but it's hard, now it's so hard to look back and remember exactly how old I, pick, I sort of thought it would be. What we can do is we can examine the lower jaw, not right now, I don't think they'd be terribly impressed with us, but we can go and examine the condition of the teeth once the skull is left and go and see how, they, how far down they've been worn. And that will give us a more accurate idea of how old this particular buffalo was. Right, we will be back, I promise. We will come back here towards the end of the sunrise at Safari. But for now, it's time for us to leave our lionesses, their cubs, and the big male lions to their breakfast. So well done to Abba Eyes. You ladies did a good job last night. It was not an easy one. But provided for the entire family and whether they liked it or not for the males as well who were sleeping off to the side. So one last view of our oldest set of Nkuhuma cubs and their gorgeous little faces complete with leaf in mouth <laughs> and then it's time for us to move off and since it is